my mum's in the room next to me and I feel like she's gonna come through and be like, who are you talking to? And it's me. Also my boyfriend's coming around and I feel like he's gonna turn up and I'm gonna be like, hi, I'm filming. Hi everyone, so today I'm doing a quick review of All the Right Places by Jennifer Niven. Now this book came out in, I want to say December, but I don't know. It's a fairly new book. <laughs> um, you've probably seen a lot of other booktubers talking about it. It's been very, very popular and I can see why. I just finished this a couple days ago. It didn't take me very long to read at all. But, oh, I cried. Like that, that, that's, I'm going to start it off, I cried. It's very, very John Green-esque, like, I mean, a lot, it's very similar to The Fault in Our Stars. I mean, no one's got cancer, but that sort of sadness and death and dying and things. And also, you know, <laughs> the girl's got a name which happens to be a colour and the boy has a name which could have came right out of Charles Dickens' novel, so... I'm trying to think about what to say so that I don't give massive spoilers. <laughs> Basically, the book is about a boy and a girl. Um, yes, they fall in love. That's kind of typical of young adult books. There's Violet Markey, who... I want to say she's 17? 18? I can't remember how old they are. <laughs> she survived a car crash that unfortunately her sister died in. She feels somewhat responsible. She spent the last like year or so um, like not driving, not even getting in a car and just kind of being shut out and not being how she used to be. And there's Finch or Theodore Finch. He goes by his surname and I quite like that because my cat's name is Theodore so <laughs> it, I just couldn't help but picture a cat whenever I thought of him which I, really really random I'm sure you won't think that too. Um, basically Finch has my hair's mopping ball I'm sorry it's been in the buns it's everywhere. <laughs> Theodore is very very depressed and um, at one point like he has a school counsellor that he talks to and the school counsellor suggests he might have bipolar disorder which makes sense so he you know he's got a couple of mental health issues going on and he's very very suicidal and he's classed as the freak like He's got like one good friend, everyone just sees him as a freak at school, no one talks to him, no one likes him. And then he kind of takes a liking to Violet because he goes up on the bell tower at his school and he basically, he does things where he um, will do things like that, like stand on a high ledge as if he's going to kill himself but then he doesn't because he likes the feeling of knowing that he didn't and things like that. But when he's up there, Violet is up there and he saves her from like falling and Everyone's like, oh Violet, you saved Finch's life and she becomes like the hero and she doesn't want that and you know, in her head she's going, but I don't save him, he saved me and it's all kind of weird at first, like, you know, they don't really get on, that's all the sort of encounter they have and then they've got one class together, which I want to say US Geography and um, they have to do a project where they have to go and see like the sites of the state they live in and Violet doesn't want to do it, she has, um, extenuating circumstances because of her sister's death so she doesn't have to do like homework and projects but Finch volunteers to go with Violet and the teacher says you know what Violet you can do it you're doing it no excuses and at first she's really not having it she doesn't want to you know talk to anyone Finch tries to talk to her on Facebook and things and they go on a wander and she doesn't really like it and then in the end you know they go on a couple other places and you know they get on and they start to sort of fall in love and go out with each other and things and it's very well done because like just just it doesn't I'm trying to word it like how does he do it he Finch kind of outwardly says you know that he loves her but then he doesn't sort of force anything and then I, I don't know it, it just it works <laughs> eventually Finch ends up like disappearing and nobody can get in contact with him no one can find him and Violet's really really concerned but no one else really is, like his mum isn't, his parent, you know, Violet's parents aren't, nobody's that concerned, they're all like Finch will be fine, he disappears all the time and she gets really really concerned but then she ends up like she tries to find him and she gets like little texts and things like from Finch, um, sort of like every couple, I think like every five days or so and it ends up being that he's gone to the other places that they were going to go wandering together I don't really want to tell you what else happened. I mean, you can probably guess, but I don't want to say it because it is pretty much the main point of the book. But there's one scene where I just bawled my eyes out. Like, I was sitting there and just sobbed. And it was so sad. And it's funny because the only other book I cried at is The Fault in Our Stars because I just don't cry at books. Um, and as I say, they are very similar. So the way that Jennifer Niven deals with 
the topic of like depression and being suicidal and things it's just so delicate and it's so well done she doesn't make it like a taboo thing she just makes it normal because it is you know anyone can get a mental health issue along those lines as severe more severe or not as severe I don't really think you can get more severe but you know <laughs> she gets it you know she doesn't make it out to be anything special either you know Finch isn't special because he's depressed Finch is Finch and it is just a beautiful way to be done and I do think you know I mean I can see some people not liking the book which you know every book's gonna have people who don't like it I did see a review for it and somebody said that there was one chapter and they said if anyone else has read the book it was very very disturbing and for the life of me I can't think of what it might be I mean well there's one scene I can think it might be that but it wasn't so much disturbing as it was Niven describing exactly what something would be had that actually happened in real life and I'm pretty darn sure there are more disgusting and disturbing books out there so I don't know I honestly think if you if you like John Green if you love The Fault in Our Stars you need to read this if you've just read a sad book read a couple happy ones first <laughs> that's my struggle I, I read this and was like I need to read something happy because I'm just gonna get really depressed if I read any more sad books and look at my bookcase I have no happy books sitting there I mean there's maybe one or two but predominantly they are definitely looking like very depressive books <laughs> so that says something about me it's a very very beautiful book and it is definitely I say this about quite a few books but it does have a place in my heart all books do but just I can't describe it I'm awful at things I'm sorry I can't really express how I feel about books sometimes and my problem is is that I just want to go right into it but I'll give spoilers and I don't want to give you guys spoilers because there's nothing worse than watching a review thinking I want to read that book what what does this person think of it and they're like oh by the way major plot thing that happens here that you don't really want to know about until the end of the book and I'm just like well great I don't need to read it now yeah I'm gonna just internally combust <laughs> with my love for this book because I don't want to spoil it for you all but if you can pick this book up I struggled with it at first I actually started to read it when I first got it and I was just having none of it, this whole bell tower stuff, I was like, yeah, it's, it's alright. But stick with it, it gets so much better. Like, it's not an awful book to start with, it's just me. I can't start a new book, because I'm, because obviously it's setting the scenes up and building the characters, I'm just like, this is boring, can we get into something? So, if I read a book and it grabs me from, like, the first couple of pages, like City of Bones did, then it's good. <laughs> but, no, it, 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 I just love this book. Even just looking at it now makes me want to cry though, because I know, like, I mean, I guess what was going to happen, but just the way it happened and, oh, it has definitely, definitely encouraged me to at least want to go and explore the place where I live. I'm quite lazy and I'd rather sit and explore a book, in fic a fictional book world than actually go and visit my own and see things in my own. And I feel like, you know, that's the whole point that of the project Finch and Violet had to do and okay the book is sad but you take from that that you know Finch was happy when he was with Violet and going to visit all these places and it's just made me want to go out and you know it's my door I need to go <laughs> basically the book's great enjoy it read it I have to go now because I've got here sorry <laughs> bye